guys and welcome back. Um, my name is Melanie and I run a fashion and lifestyle blog over on MissMelanieMay.com where I post fashion, recipes, health content, outfits, you name it. I kind of post whatever. Um, but in today's video, I wanted to do a health update for you guys because it has been about two years I realized since I last posted a health update and it is a snowy day in Dallas if you can believe that it's like freezing cold out we've got snow which like is very rare for here um, and so I thought it'd be the perfect day to film this video and I was like almost done filming it and my camera ran out of storage because I still had my holiday haul video on that I forgot to delete and so I went to go delete those and I've accidentally deleted the first recording of this so this is take two we'll hope it's better than the first anyways so yeah, so it has been two years since I filmed a health video and when I had shared my experiences back in like 2018, 2019, um, when I was going through everything in the beginning uh, with my autoimmune story, I like wanted to continue to share my journey and my experiences really helped me when I was going through it to like find other videos and Instagram people that were sharing their story. So anyways, I definitely want to continue to share, but I haven't really had like a ton of like groundbreaking things that have happened where I'm like way better or way worse. It's just kind of been pretty much consistently the same, but I have, I do have a fair bit of stuff I could update you guys on. So that's kind of what this video is for. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, I'm going to link my playlist of all my like autoimmune health related videos up here. I've got about four or five different videos. So, um, in that video, it was January of 2019, so that was my senior year of college. I graduated in May of 2019, moved to Dallas that July, and then um, most of 2020 obviously was with just being inside with COVID, and now we are in 2021 already. So, it has been um, a little over three years since I first started having my autoimmune symptoms, and about two years since I filmed that last health update. And in that video, I just watched it, so I knew what I had talked about in that video. Um, I had mentioned about how I was trying to go on Lyrica because I had just transferred rheumatologist back in Buffalo, and they thought it might be fibromyalgia. And I think that was basically basically where I left off. But since then, like I said, I moved to Dallas. I transferred um, practices. So I found a rheumatologist and a neurologist and like those are the two main ones that I see um, but all my doctors I found some here which I was really worried about when I had first thought about moving here but in the end it really worked out. Um, it definitely was a lot of work and effort to research doctors and originally I had asked my rheumatologist um, in Buffalo if he had any recommendations or anyone he knew. Of. He didn't know of anyone specifically but he had said that you know he knew that UT Southwestern was like a great medical research hospital and stuff. So that was my initial plan was to try to go through them and do it because um, I kind of wanted everything all together instead of having like a bunch of different, like back home in Buffalo I had like a rheumatologist, I had a neurologist, but they, none of them were connected. So I had like portals for everything and they didn't really talk to each other as far as like what medications I was on or what, you know, it was just like unless I updated them they wouldn't know. So anyways, this UT Southwestern seemed really great, um, but after many attempts to try to get an appointment and they kept telling me I needed referrals from the doctor and the doctor would send it and they would say they didn't get it and then I would need some other ridiculous thing and it was just this went on for weeks and I was like, this is ridiculous. If I can't even get an initial appointment, like imagine how hard it is if I actually need to get in on an emergency. So after doing my research, I ended up finding a rheumatologist with Baylor Scott and White which is the same kind of idea it's connected there's a hospital in Dallas um, it's connected to Baylor University but of a whole system of healthcare providers and that is where I've landed I have a neurologist well I don't know if the neurologist is under there I think they're separate but I love my neurologist um, and then my rheumatologist and all my other doctors pretty much fall under this Baylor Scott and White which is great um, I have a portal with them, all the information's on there, I never have to worry about anything. When I go to the neuro rheumatologist, they have they do the blood work right in the office, like it's all great. So I moved here, got new doctors here, and 
when I went for like my first, I think it was one of my first appointments with my new um, rheumatologist here, she had suggested I take this blood test that is called the advised blood test and I had never heard of it before. So if you are someone that thinks you might have lupus, maybe bring that up to your doctor. It is a specific test to see like if you have lupus, um, more specific than like the blood work they do through Quest or one of those. It's I'm not exactly sure what it's testing for, but it's very specific what they're looking for in the blood. And it's like a special lab, so it's not like it's getting tested through a regular laboratory. Like the blood gets sent to the special lab and they do it and um, they guarantee that they'll keep the cost low if your insurance doesn't cover it. Um, so I had that done and it was all normal, as I kind of thought. It was nice to have that done because I had never had that done before. So definitely look into that. I'll link the website down below that talks about it. At the time of that last video, I mentioned Lyrica. So my insurance never approved Lyrica um, because there isn't like an off brand of Lyrica. So I had to go on Gabapentin, which is also known to help with fibromyalgia, but it isn't Lyrica. There isn't as far as I know, when I was trying to get on Lyrica, there wasn't like an off-brand of Lyrica and the insurance wouldn't cover it for me unless I had been on other ones first. So I went on that and it seemed to be helping in the beginning. I had to increase the dose because you can be on quite a bit of it, um, but the dosage that I was on was quite high. So I don't know the exact timeline, but somewhere along the lines after I moved here to Dallas, I ended up going off of that and then I think I might have been on a muscle relaxant when I moved to Dallas, but um, I don't think I was on it every day. So now I take it every night called Baclofen. It's a muscle relaxant, so I take that every night. And I've continued to take Plaquenol since the beginning, twice a day. And then I was on a NASED when I moved here, and I don't remember which one it was. I've tried like three or four at this point. Um, so that's kind of where I was when I moved. And I just went off the gabapentin because I just really wasn't sure if it was necessarily helping and I was taking a lot of it. Um, and so at this point, I don't really know if it is fibromyalgia. I thought that for a little bit, but I don't know. I just think, I don't know. I don't know if it necessarily is. I still think it could maybe be just like an autoimmune disease that hasn't developed fully into um, like lupus or I'm gonna get into another one that the doctor thought I might have. So anyways, I think it might just be, well, at this point it is not a diagnosed autoimmune condition. It's kind of just like, you know, a mixed connective tissue type of muscle joint situation going on. I do have the positive ANA, but beyond that, nothing else. So yeah, so at some point I went off the gabapentin and um, I tried to at some point also reduce the amount of like dosage that I had on my other medications just to see, but I kind of started to have symptoms and flares. So I just stayed on the same amount that I'm on and I just had a checkup recently at this point I'm just going to continue staying on the same dosages until you know until the doctor tells me that we need to try to reduce it or try something else you know at this point just staying on what I have so that is the doctor part of it I did have one so I mean I have good days and bad days I would say at this point I'm like at a point now where I'm at the least pain that I've probably had since I started which is great um, and I think that is due to the medications that I have and I really like the doctors that I have found here which is great. I did have a pretty bad flare this past fall of 2020 and when I went to the doctor, when I went to the rheumatologist, um, I had, well I had, she gave me a stero steroid pack because in the past that has helped to like reduce the really bad inflammation in the beginning. Um, but she also wanted to do an x-ray because she had thought based on my symptoms that it could have been ankylosing spondylitis. Now I had had blood work done, I believe. I'm pretty sure I've had like every blood work I've done imaginable. I had some blood work done and that nothing was normal or nothing had come, everything was normal and nothing had came back um, alarming. But she did want to do an x-ray just to see. So I had an x-ray done this past fall when I had my flare and they thought they might have seen some damage. So then she scheduled an MRI of my SI joints, um, which in my last video that I filmed in 2019 updating you guys, I had just had an MRI done of my SI, jo SI joints then with contrast and it was normal. But she said like if it was this AS, maybe it had developed and you can see something in an MRI. So I had the MRI done and the MRI was totally normal. So at this point, I don't have that ankylosing spondylitis. Maybe it would eventually lead to that. But like I said, at this point, I don't really have 
a um, specific diagnosis, so it's about the same as it was two years ago when I filmed that update video. But I'm kind of at the point now where I don't really care as much. You know, for a while I like that was all I wanted was the diagnosis. And I think it would still be helpful, but at this point, looking at all the autoimmune diseases that I might have or may have, um, if I had a diagnosis today or tomorrow, what I'm doing wouldn't necessarily change. I'm still like on those same medications that I would be on if I had the diagnosis. And it's not like these diagnoses have like a magic pill and you'll feel better um, or a cure. You know, I'm basically doing exactly what I would be doing if I had those diagnoses. So to me, at this point, it doesn't necessarily matter. Would it be nice? Yes, but I don't think anything would really change that much if I had a diagnosis. So I don't really care as much as I used to about that part. But I will say that, you know, it is hard at times, you know, when you don't know what you have. Um, so that does make it hard. And then this past flare, I also, when I went, um, I've kind of had like, my legs will like tremor when I'm doing like workouts where I have to raise my straighten my legs above me or even like lift my leg like up vertical so when I went and I had this flare um she had seen the tremor because I you know had showed her I don't think I had ever showed a doctor that before I'd had it but I had never had it that bad where I was when it when I was actually at an appointment with the doctor so she was pretty like well that's so strange so she wanted me to go to a neurologist, which I was seeing a neurologist since the beginning for migraines, but a neurologist specific with tremors and movement and that type of thing. So I went to an appointment this past fall, right before Thanksgiving, and had an appointment with um, a neurologist that specialized in tremors, and he was very stumped, and he said, this is so strange. I have don't really know exactly what tremor it is. It's nothing that I could necessarily diagnose at this point. But he said like, if you're, you're not in pain, it's not you know inhibiting your day-to-day -day life. I think you should just continue with what the what you've been doing. And um, you know, if it got worse, then I would need to go see an even more specialized neurologist. Um, but at this point, I'm not doing that. So I did have that appointment. And um, at this last flare this past fall, I also, after I had the steroid pack, she had suggested starting Celebrex, which is another NAS that I had never tried before. And so I did start that and I've been on that for a few months now and I would say that has helped the most out of any of the NAS that I've ever been on. So it's definitely a trial and error with that to kind of figure out what is, you know, helpful for you. And then the neurologist piece of it, so I was getting trigger injections um, back in Buffalo for my shoulders, moved here to Dallas, found a neurologist, was still taking a medication when I felt a migraine coming on, but I never was on a medication for day-to-day -day migraine pain. But they had recommended possibly doing nerve block ingest injections, which this is gonna sound crazy, but they actually go, they they put the injections in your the back of your head. They numb the area, but it definitely hurts. So, I mean, like you don't see the needle because they're doing it in the back of your head, but I definitely have gotten over my dislike for blood work and all of that since <laughs> since getting sick. I used to like not even want to get blood work. Oh my god, I would get so nervous about it. But now, because I can get the blood work done right at the doctor, I just go and have the appointment and do the blood work right after, and I don't have to like even think about it, um, which is kind of nice. But I don't know. I've just kind of gotten over it. So the nerve block injections. If I would have started with that, I probably would have been freaking out because. It's definitely kind of a weird feeling, but shot in your head, multiple in your head. Um, but I was fine with it. But it didn't necessarily help as much as I thought it would. I mean, it helped reduce the headaches, but I was still having a fair bit. So eventually, the doctor recommended me trying Botox injections, which is exactly like what it sounds. It's like Botox that you would get for you know wrinkles, but it's where they put it. So they put it like a few in the shoulders some on the forehead so for the most part I, I can't move my forehead which I guess is a plus I don't I won't have wrinkles anytime soon but like it's not like Botox where you can like tell them oh put it next to my lip or whatever like there's specific spots they have to put it for the headaches um, and you have to go every 12 weeks and it's really expensive so in the beginning I had to kind of do some stuff to get it covered by insurance but once I did I've been fine having it covered by insurance. So if you have migraines and you haven't thought about Botox injections, definitely think about it as a treatment option because it definitely really helped for me. Um, and I really, it does seem to be helping a lot. So like I said, I'm kind of at the point now where I'm like in the least pain as much as I can be. I still have weeks where I'm not great, but for the most part, I'm 
I'm a lot better. And then the only other thing that I mentioned in that last video was I was going to a chiropractor and a physical therapist, which once I moved here um, to Dallas, I did find both of those here. The physical therapist here though wasn't necessarily the same as it was back home in New York. From my experience, the physical therapists here were really only focused on um, like building your strength and having like a fitness routine where back in New York they did that but then they also had done a lot with like the muscle like stem pads for they release the muscle and then they would do cupping they would do heat they would do ice packs a lot of different things but here at least from like I said my experience they didn't really do a lot of that here so after I was going for a while I just kind of like decided to drop it because at, the, at that time, it was before COVID, so I was going into the office five days a week, so I had to go on Saturdays, and it would just take up my whole morning, and it was just kind of the point where I was like, I can do these workouts at home, so I have a printout of the things he wants me to do, and I'm not great at doing it, but I still have them if I want to do them. And then the chiropractor was the same deal. It was like totally different. The guy that I found here did a lot with like my neck and cracking it, or back in New York, I didn't have that. And I really just didn't think it was helping that much. Um, and I like chiropractors are so like, you have so many mixed reviews on chiropractors and I'm the same way with it. I really don't know if it's beneficial or not. Like I didn't really see that much of a difference to be honest. But what I ended up doing is they have a massage therapist within the um, office and it's considered a medical massage. So the insurance that I have now covers, goes towards the insurance. Um, as opposed to like going to a spa or something. So anyways, so that's what I've been doing once a month is I haven't been doing any chiropractor appointments at all, no adjusting. I've just been doing a medical massage for my shoulders and back and all of that and that seems to be helping. No, no PT at this point and just going for regular appointments every, you know, three to six months. I continue to have blood work with my metallurgist. Nothing has come up crazy with that. I'm still on a gluten-free, pretty much fully dairy-free diet. I, the sugar part of it, like I'm not as crazy about as when I first went on the diet. Like I still obviously have dessert every night, I'm not gonna lie, but um, you know, I try to watch the sugar intake. It's not great obviously, but it is what it is. I'm not gonna kill myself over that, but I definitely think the gluten-free thing has made an immense difference. Um, and I'm still on all the supplements that I'm on. I think I did a blog post about the supplements that I take, I'm pretty sure I did, so I'll link that down below. And yeah, so things have just been, that's, that's kind of where things are. I cannot believe it's been three years since I started having symptoms. And my symptoms have pretty much consistently stayed the same as from when I filmed that first video. And like the main things are the headaches, the fatigue, the tiredness, the pain, and the muscles and joints. Um, I have a hard time doing like any strenuous activities as far as like working out goes. And that's something that in the beginning I really pushed myself to try to do more and more. but. Now I just kind of like listen to my body and um, have been doing a lot of like Pilates um, classes on the Peloton app and um, just like walking and cycling classes and not, not like going crazy with like, you know, a TRX like cross train fitness craziness just because I know like in the end it won't be great. Um, and the sleep is definitely like if I don't get enough sleep or if I don't get a good night's rest, that makes a huge difference in how I feel the next day. Beyond that, things have, like I said, been pretty consistent. Definitely want to continue to um, update you guys and just share more um, like health tips and stuff like that. Um, if anyone ever has any questions, definitely leave those in the comments. And yeah, I mean, I said I like, definitely have good weeks and I have bad weeks. Um, when I had that MRI done this past fall, that was the first time I had really been like really upset in a long time. And I know this is gonna sound crazy, and unless you experience it, I don't think you fully understand it. But when you don't know like what you have or what like is causing all your symptoms, in the back of your mind, you almost want to know, you want a diagnosis, even if it's not good. So when I had that MRI this past fall, I had no idea if I you know, maybe had this ankylosing spondylitis. But it was like the idea that maybe this doctor had finally found what was wrong with me and I like kind of like started to like like not get excited but you know I don't even know how to describe it like be grateful like if I knew what was wrong with me and when 
the MRI came back completely normal. I had definitely a day or two or like a few, you know, a little bit where I was really upset about it and it was, you know, it, it's it's a weird feeling. Like I said, you have to you have to really experience it. It's like, what? Why would you be crying that you don't know that like it was normal? But um, it's just like one of those things when you, you've been dealing with it for so long. It's just something that you are, it's always in the back of your mind. Like, you know, well, what if it is this? So I will say that that was, that was hard, but in general, I don't, like, I, I'm not a crazy person like I was in the beginning where I would spend, like, hours on Google every week, like, trying to find what it was and, like, you know, just, like, consuming, like, it was just consuming trying to find, figure, figure it out. Um, and I don't, like, I don't do that, do that anymore. And on that note, I'm going to wrap it up because this is getting really long. Netflix. There is a series that I watched this past um, year in COVID. I've watched so many Netflix series, but it's called Diagnosis. It is, um, I forget her name, but she's a doctor and she writes a column every week for the New York um, Times about people that have these rare, really weird symptoms and rare conditions and no one's been able to diagnose them. So they've made it into a Netflix series. There's like 10 episodes and um, it like walks through, you know, how she meets the clients and, you know, gets their health history and writes an article and posts videos. And the idea is that like people in the world will see this and someone else maybe knows what she has or some other doctor will have an idea of what a diagnosis is. And let me tell you, I probably four years ago would have thought that was the most boring show ever, but it was so fascinating and interesting to me. Um, I don't know. So anyways, that was just a random little thing. If you are on Netflix and need something to watch, check it out. But I hope you're having a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.